Behold my inbox. A place of life and death, where the hopeful self-published press releases of a new developer can start an illustrious new career. And whoever the hell made this stuff can just keep it for themselves. Every half a year or so, I go down the press releases on my inbox to see what I, and everyone else, have missed. The games that appear in this showcase are games I have to have seen nowhere else on the internet, even though they might end up earning quite a name for themselves later. These games are often first-time attempts. They're often unpolished and rushed, and yes, you can get the sense that they may have avoided getting coverage for reasons more than just bad luck. But they all deserve a chance. So without further ado, here is the 8th batch of games from my inbox. For the past year or so, tons of hapless developers have been regularly sending in inbox filler, hitting the low-cost, high-reward genre of first-person scary walking and procedural dungeon rogueliking. But where are the virtual operating systems? The chatbots and the interactive literature that could make a potentially great game all in straight HTML if they wanted. So, okay, if you've gotten a kick out of Emily is Missing, Kingsway, or the Lost Phone series, you're gonna get a mega kick out of Hypnospace Outlaw. The game itself is an alternate history 1999 internet submerged in surreal, sarcastic Timonericisms, inspired by the gaudy GeoCities pages and unwieldy Winamp skins that had become a thing of the past. Gameplay is contextualized with an appropriately confrontational role that makes a lot of sense here. The player is a Hypno-OS enforcer, who flags, moderates, and removes content violating this internet's draconian rules. Think of Papers, Please, combined with the interactive internet of the modern Grand Theft Auto games, with sticky moral dilemmas appearing as soon as you notice a child scribble drawing of copyrighted content. Well, too bad. Ignorance of copyright law is no excuse for the internet police. Shblam! Wazam! This is such a George game. This nostalgic thrill ride of an internet from 20 years ago, so unlike our own, has you stamping your moderating tools on a number of deliciously malicious pages, ranging from cash scams to harassment clubs, eventually leading up to something the developers hint as a hook for a deeper story. But with a backer beta test version this good, I have few doubts that the final product won't at least let loose a lot of laughs. The professor Helper is always here for you. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning, mid-June, with the sun not shining and a look of hard, wet rain in the windows when I was scrolling down my inbox and an attractive stranger walked in. From 1924, in a period piece San Franciscan shade, stinking with prohibition, chauvinism, and dumb knuckleheads drunk on bootleg power. I spotted quite a few nods to L.A. Noir and a fervent interest in historical trivia. Though the modern perspective fogs its lens, the bartender's dated slang does the job as good as any kicked contraption. You solve cases and find clues by pointing and clicking, but what this case of distrust has setting it apart is its panache, its jazz, its sense of style that has everything everyone says coming out swinging with capital C cool. It's just camouflage, though. A charade for the lies these guys convince their own selves of to pull it off. Look at the evidence, write down everything, cross-reference their statements, and catch them in their lies. In a job like this, you gotta assume everyone's lying to you. That way, you're never too wrong. Legendary Gary is an RPG of parallel worlds, one of which involves a lovable loser named Gary who literally lives in his mother's basement and plays games all day. The other is your regularly nonsensical fantasy video game adventure he hops in and plays all day with the story zigzagging progress between both threads as you do your basic math and geometry. Combat is good old hex-based turn-based tactics, this time with some kinetic motion involved since characters don't technically stop and wait to take turns, but rather complete all their actions at the same time at the end of turns. Under this system, combatants can hit each other at the same time, and enemies are prone to all that friendly fire baiting tactics he learned from Into the Breach. But when not doing your basic math and geometry puzzle combat, you're simultaneously laughing and crying at clever jokes that punch into the hopelessness of poverty and depression. God damn it, Gary! Doing anything other than sitting around and playing video games all day requires a lot more of these motivation points than you'd expect, with the story frequently reminding us that failing those speech checks is gonna carry consequences that are a little, uh, realer than usual. Whether or not it works, you can still tell that Legendary Gary was made with a lot of love, a lot of attention, and a desire to do things a little bit differently. And from a totally different time and place comes another beautiful mess of neo-nostalgia and dated memes. This time, the name of a game that uh, follows up irritating stick is Puss. And it's all about keeping your puss away from the barriers of the world that are just trying to contain it. 
You've played this game before, at some point in your life, I guarantee it. If not on some Flash website, then maybe on your own desktop wallpaper, or maybe you wanted to giggle at Irritating Stick on the PlayStation 1. Except this time, this one version of the same game has polish and stuff? Cause like, that's actually a really good little animation loop they got there. And your crosshair hand squeezes in and out and it's locked onto your little kitty cats that you're always petting the puss. It's just an adorable, fun little touch. And levels will have crazy moving hazards and bullet hell segments and boss fights. And there's really good visual feedback. It's always clear what parts are background and foreground. They always keep coming up with fun new levels. There's this smart little bit of forgiveness there for close calls and oh my God. Is that a combo system? This game has a combo system! Why is this game so much better than it has any right to be? So I'm stretching the rules a bit here with this one. Last time I included a game I heard about in a coffee shop, so this time I'm including a game I heard about from a fan in the Super Bunny Hop Discord. It's Vietnam Apostrophe 65, a deceptively straight-laced package from the no-nonsense wargamers at Every Single Soldier, who make games of historical state-ordered violence occurring anywhere from 300 to just seven years ago. But between their two Boots on the Grounds games, Vietnam seems to be more of the fan favorite over Afghanistan, which feels really weird to say as an American. So while I can't comment on that one, I can say that regardless of your political affiliation, you're not likely to walk away from either games interpreting them as straight Call of Duty level propaganda. Because both take the theme of running a counterinsurgency campaign rather than a straight up destroy the bad guy campaign. Your enemy is usually invisible, and their mechanics ring you through a grinder of high difficulty because they do not play by the same rules you do. But it is without that much of a scary learning curve. Vietnam 65 is a deceptively straight-laced game because it's deceptively simple, moving at a fast pace with a tight focus and a simple interface that could easily work as a mobile game. But the real big twist is that you're fighting for the quote, hearts and minds of the villagers. Plop an infantry into their huts for some persuasion, and maybe they'll rat out insurgents' positions for your artillery to blast them without even standing a chance. Fail to court those villagers cautiously though, and you're at the mercy of enemy units who are way more stealthy, with way more lethal ambushes than the usual shtick in this genre. Add to that the fact that your units can and quite easily will starve to death out in the jungle with their supply lines cut off, and you have a game of intel and logistics more so than one of time-efficient destruction. Steadily leading to the moment in which your cumbersome, starving war empire of tanks and bulldozers has to eventually get replaced by a local population on your side, armed and trained by your own Green Berets. What could possibly go wrong? So if you ever wanted to know how to become overwhelmed and outsmarted in an asymmetrical conflict where your army is the one with the massive fleet of tanks and helicopters, then maybe this game can teach that lesson. And last but not least, we have yet another historical period piece. The Council is a telltale style narrative adventure game taking place on some weird island off the coast of England in the late 1700s, oh, which no. means some cameos have got to be cashed in. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. The Council's non-violent socializing gameplay has you allocating points, consuming items, and even kind of equipping inventory items, all in the name of steering your character's interest and observations in speech and sense. Skills don't have to be limited to just hacking and lockpicking, after all. So you have a lot of these gamey tokens being thrown around menus to flowchart narrative sequences and encourage replayability, and it's really interesting playing a narrative adventure game in which you're going to be going back to do it all again as a different class to try moves and skills you couldn't before. But I have it back here at the end of the list, because despite all those excellent ideas, you're in for a technical and artistic dose of jank. As fun as the time and place may be, the story seems awfully poorly paced. And it's told with characters who have bad lip sync, bad facial animations, bad frame rates, strange cinematography, and voice actors who will never convince me that they're supposed to match their characters' faces. You can't win them all when digging through the inbox, but with a few good ideas, you can come awfully close. I'm a saint hearing voices. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. The conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio 